Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Together or Not at All, which is how Jimmy Carr likes his applause. Another episode I love, spoilers, for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. The episode is rated TV-14, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Do you have a plan? Yeah, <laughs> not, not that much of one. And yeah, they they screw with Gemma's implant to to punish her, and they seem to also have turned off Daisy's powers. So we get a non-powered Daisy fighting a Kree. Very very cool. And yeah, the ship blows up right in front of them. That is not great. That was that was their way out. Very again, very nicely done keeping them on the back foot and we meet Maston Dar seriously badass and the fact that his initials come out to MD make a lot of sense because he is a doctor of death and yeah I just show them how we spill blood and try to find her you know that yeah he's they're not really known for finding people so much as killing a lot. And let's see, then we have the. Uh, yeah, I like. Sinara, there's a lot of time where she doesn't open her mouth a lot. She communicates a lot through, through her face and body language and such. But when Cassius says our freedom, she does say hour because yeah that is very questionable and let's see um i think that might right the the um, yeah, you know, she, she says, you're begging, it's repulsive, you're like a dog. Next thing, you're gonna die like a dog, you're gonna be, you're gonna lie like a dog. And, uh, let's see, yeah, um, I liked when May, you know, she really did look like she, her goose was cooked when, you know, the, the, Vrelnaxian showed up and yeah very you know Enoch gets there and and you know saves her and is like that is the third Vrelnaxian I have killed not to toot my own horse as you would say I would never say that and yeah you know it does make a lot of sense the they're not interested in him because he doesn't have you know what did he say the, the gooey innards or something like that you know which is what they go for and then the you know yeah actually I'm not entirely sure how to refer to them but yeah some some people in mass show up and are like get over here and I do appreciate it that we learn more about that at the end of the episode and yeah uh, Maston Dar is just going around killing people. You know, where is the you know Quake? I don't know. And he just slices the drum. Now you answer me. You know, it's like, what makes you so certain that this that these people have any clue about this? You know, just like they happen to be where you know she seemingly was. That that doesn't mean that they have anything to do with it. just yeah. And. Let's see. Um, yeah, Flint is told by the others that Tess was was killed by the Cree. And yeah, some more great stuff between Cassius and Falnak, and we get the some details about why Cassius was exiled and 
and and and we again have more of this you know brother dynamic you know the the I like when Cassius says to Falnak, spoken like a true son of our father, you know, because, yeah, at the end of the day, Cassius doesn't really want to be like their father, you know, he, he speaks highly of him sometimes, but it's not what he wants, and, you know, there are many cases, you know, it doesn't even only happen with with like powerful people, but there are a number of of fathers who can't handle if their son is not just like them. And let's see. Then we have. Um, um, there we go. Um, yeah. Um, Brief but very cool fight between Daisy and Maston Dar, and Deke shows up and and yeah, you know at at first like, you know, Jeb, yeah Fitzsimmons are are not completely, you know, resistant to him, but then you know Daisy says this is the guy who's only to because I yeah, you know and this, he works for because I, I don't. Sometimes I technically work for Cassius, you know, and and the, the yeah, like Fitz was straight up gonna gonna like kill Deke if not for his current physical condition. And, but but yeah, also the, you know before that you know uh, Fitz says something like maybe you know maybe this isn't so bad and Deke is like thank you, this guy. Buddy, pal, but yeah, and and uh, let's see, yeah, um, I like when they're all reunited, and and hug and such, very sweet, and let's see them. Um, yeah, we see that you know, Mac tries to to talk to Flint, but, you know, he he goes around the corner, and then when he's back, Flint is gone, and he goes straight to, to the Cree and, and says something like, I don't want more people to die in my account. I know where the World Destroyer is, and, you know, just, and they're like, oh, no, you know, because, yeah, like, at the end of the day, he just met Daisy, he just met these people, and now a lot have died, in a very short amount of time, you know, so it, you could understand if he blamed them, even though they're trying to help. But no, he was actually, and, and you know, he brought just a, you know, not a huge, just like a, a less than a handful of, you know, fairly small rocks. And, and yeah, you know, the Cree, you know, like, pats him down. is like, oh, see, he had this in his pocket, you know, and that's... It doesn't look like a weapon, but he shapes it into this, you know, sharp thing, and right up the eye. Yikes! And I'm the one you want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And yeah, I. They're talking about what are we gonna do about the door? And he blocks the door with a bunch of rocks. Very cool. And. Yeah, you know, Deke is saying, you know, I'll, I'll go first and I'll throw it down, yeah. And they don't really trust him. And I, I don't know if I think that he would have actually betrayed them. I think he's just not really thinking too much about how they view him right now. You know, because I feel like if he really was just going to betray them, I don't think he would have told them all these details first. I think he would have just you know, gone up to the, the thing and, and used the, the, the anti-gravity thing and just left them there. You know, there wouldn't necessarily have been anything they could do, but he specifically tells them that that's something he can do. But it is very understandable that they don't trust I'm not saying I trust him. I'm just saying in this particular situation, you know, he... I don't think this was him trying that, but yeah. And I do appreciate, you know, they don't say, you get, you have to stay here. They just say, you go last. And I also like the thing of, you know, 
Can you believe I even got out of the room? Colson welded the door shut. I had to, you know, escape through. I had to open a window, you know, into space and the, the um, into outer space. Yeah, that was, that was quite funny. And let's see, the, yeah, um, the, you know, Fitz is like, oh yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's on level three, and they're like, the place that's overrun with, you know, man-eating beasts? How was I supposed to? I don't think you're giving me enough credit. I came through time. That was also great when, you know, several times in the episode, they're like, you know, how did Fitz get? Oh, we'll talk about it later, you know. And and at one point, Mac, in response to we'll talk about it later, is like, how can the story, you know, this story can't wait. It's about time travel. And let's see. Yeah, at, at one, uh, let's see, um, it's Falnak is like, you know, yeah, basically like stunned, and, and he says to, to Cassius, I almost admire, the, the, that level of incompetence is almost admirable, and I just want there to be a blooper where Cassius is like, it's the sweetest thing you ever said to me. Why couldn't you be this nice all the time? Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, we get the, the yeah, Sonaris. I, I quite appreciate it. She doesn't even hide, you know, at whose hand did Maston Dar fall? My own. <laughs> and and there's this tense moment, and it's like, okay, how is he going to react? And Fall Knight laughs. And, just, yeah, because at the end of the day, this is what he respects. He's not worried about it. he's he's not like, how dare you kill the person, you know, my my second, you know, my, my right hand. He's like, nice. That was that's just kind of impressive, you know. Cause and and that's also the thing. If Maston Dar was taken out by someone, I guess Maston Dar wasn't that impressive. You know, forget all the stuff he's already done. Forget how long he's trusted, Fulnack has trusted Masandar, it's like, okay, who's his replacement, you know? Doesn't matter to, to you know, people who only respect violence. And, you know, the fact that Fulnack, after Cassius has told him, you know, Sonara has stood by me this whole time, I, I value loyalty, she's always been there. Falnak is going to try to take Sonara, because again, think about it. in this situation, he could be like, well, I seriously respect you, Sonara, but my brother really, you know, he, he he's very, very eager to, to keep you, I'm not going to get between, no, he's like, oh, damn, I, this is an amazing day, I'm going to, I'm going to get a new right hand person, I'm going to screw over my brother again? Like, wow, this is just, this is Christmas. And, let's see, yeah, and, and I do feel confident in asserting Sonara knew what was going to happen when she walked into the room and she said, I killed Mastandar. She knew this is what it takes. This is what's going to push Kasaias over the edge. And look at her face. Like, she is ecstatic. Like, this... She basically wanted him to, like, she thinks of this as, he's self-actualizing, this is what's best for him, you know? And the, the, yeah, just, because she, there's no sense of shock, there's no, you know, like, he, he gets his hand all bloody with, with Folan, puts some on his face, you know, as, as a tribute. And he's like holding her hands, getting blood all over them, and she again, like her her eyes are lighting up. This is amazing, you know. And I do quite appreciate that because yeah, it did look you know, before we see her reaction to Cassia's killing Folnak, it does look like maybe Sonara is going to to try to you know, go with Folnak instead because she's disappointed in Cassia's, which, you know, he did let her go into the, 
um, crater, I think they call it. But what that really led her to was wanting Fulneck dead because it was his idea. You know, and I really appreciate, I, I was slightly worried that they were going to do the, you know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned misogynistic trope with Sonara going full neck instead, but no, it's, it's, just, instead it's this thing of some people you just don't, don't want to piss off, you know, and let's see, then we have the, yeah, and, and, you know the the a, f a few more words about Cassius and Fulna. You know about the the mission that got him exiled. You know Cassius says the reasons my generals were dead is because Sinara killed them. They were trying to prevent me from leaving the battlefield, where we all know I should never have been. I don't belong there. You know and just yeah. <laughs> and I like the Fitzsimmons are still like going on about well, who asked who asked who to marry them first. And let's see, yeah, really excited to see what happens. Now. You know, f they're struggling with the with the spaceship because you know Flint didn't. You know, he could fly it, but he doesn't want to go with them. And I do really respect you know Mac, and I think also Elena stayed behind to help Flint. And yeah, um, let's see the uh, what's the word? Yeah, and then yes, we see that May and Enoch are you know still alive. The the um, the um, yeah the the people there just they they grabbed them. It wasn't attack. It was to protect them from the gravity storm. Very clever. And Robin, you know, you know, the the character is credited as the seer, but that's definitely got to be. Oh, oh, right. They they called her the seer before. Anyway, yes. You know, I've been waiting so long to talk to you. Just yeah, I'll talk to you again. I did she say it? whatever? But yeah, really, really. That does make a ton of sense. The, you know, she would be the one to, to still, you know, hold out hope and and be able to find a place to survive with her powers of, you know, of, yeah, pro, what's it called? Predicting the future. And, uh, okay, so this, this is listed as spoilers um, okay I'll just I'll, I'll summarize it by saying that um, there's there's a Doctor Who reference in the episode regarding Fitzsimmons and yeah let's see yeah and and the it's not the only reference that they're you know, in this series about Doctor Who from them. There's one continuity goof, and I did also wonder about this. In Fun and, in, yeah, Fun and Games, the episode right before this one, Gemma clearly slashed Kasaias on the throat in order to keep to help the group escape. But in this episode, Kasaias only has a wound on his cheek. That was kind of, yeah, I, I don't know what... I would love to know what the, the deal is with that. If maybe... Were they originally going to have Cassius not survive into this episode and then, like, someone changed their mind? They were like, well, if we just pretend, maybe people will have forgotten where the, the slice was. I also do appreciate, you know, Falnak looks at that and is like, it's a scar, you should wear it with pride. And, yeah, uh, Daisy mentions Mr. and Mrs. Boba Fett. That was, like, yeah, quite appreciate that reference. <laughs> yeah, you play God over a dead rock, but you're just a coward who hides and then stabs his enemies in the back and in the front, and he stabs them again. That's, yeah. And, let's see... Right, and also, you know, you have the thing, Kasai says, spoken as a true child of our father, 
To Falnak, to which he responds, maybe if you bothered to sound more like him, you would be less of a disgrace. And... Let's see... I think that might be about... Come on, a room full of super agents, scientists, and superheroes. Someone give me something. How were you not eaten by those things? They have no interest in me, as I have no tender insides for them to extract. And I also like Phil saying, you know, the the yeah, the the ship, you know, got a flying car. How different can it be? And also this the you know, taking off, easy enough. Docking is the hard part, and landing, that's impossible on account of these ships weren't built with landing gear. Yeah, they were that was not what they were, yeah. Let's see. And yeah, also I, I like that May recognized Enoch by when he said Philip J. Colson, you know. Good luck. And yeah, you know, she says, You're the son of the bitch at the diner who got us into this whole mess, and he says, I am here to get you out of this whole mess, you know, is yeah. He didn't know that this would happen. Let's see. And and I like, you know, yeah, after Fitz says, you know, this whole thing about traveling through time, I think we're moving past that bit a little too quickly. Turbo, turbo, we wouldn't expect anything less. Thank you.